The title of this lecture is the Correlative Imaging in Pediatric Bone Diseases, Bone Scan and uh, a PET with, with uh, Fluorine. In fact, uh, as we have uh, seen this morning, the correlative imaging is the best diagnostic tool than the image, the image specialist we can offer to the clinician with the correlation between an at, uh, anatomy and function or metabolism. And uh, the collaboration between the radiologist and us is crucial for, for this. Not? Okay, the PET-CT and PET-CT are really the emerging techniques in, uh, in nuclear medicine, but with some differences uh, uh, between children and, uh, and adults. Uh, in children, you know that uh, we have to apply the, the dosage cards, etc. Uh, as mentioned before, it's easier to, um, and uh, the quality of the image is higher if, you, if we obtain uh, spot images and uh, whole body images. The, the detector is closer to the body of the child compared to the resolution of uh, these uh, both images. And uh, what about to perform, to decide to perform a SPECT or SPECT-CT? Uh, it's very well known that the sensitivity of the SPECT is higher to the planar images to detect the small lesions, like in this case of uh, spondylolysis. But uh, I think that we don't have to perform a SPECT-CT uh, instead of a, a SPECT due to the dosimetry if the SPECT is normal. Then. Uh, we have to uh, compare different modality images and avoid to perform unnecessary uh, CTs. For, for example, in this case of, um, of this spondyla uh, spondylolysis, it was a football player, there is a back pain, as explained before, the spondylolysis are very frequent in this kind of, uh, uh, of teenagers, and uh, we can see on the uh, planar X-ray that uh, the lesion is very congruent with uh, our. Then, do not perform SPECT-CT if not necessary, and this is due to the dosimetry. Okay. In pediatrics, the CT scan as part of the SPECT-CT in an hybrid system increases significantly the dosimetry, as well in SPECT-CT than in, in PET-CT. And uh, that means that we have to perform only the SPECT-CT for diagnostic purpose and never as a routine. Yeah. If there is a clear indication, then we can do a low-dose CT as part of the SPECT-CT or a diagnostic CT instead of a separate CT if, you have a, uh, if we have a device prepared to obtain a diagnostic uh, CT. In this case, for example, of a, a condylar hyperplasia, uh, the, the spec CT images help a lot to, to f uh, looking at the fusion, uh, fused images to see that really the hypermetabolism is in, in the condyl. Or in the other case, it's an osteoblastoma uh, in, a in a cervical vertebra, and then uh, the, the planar images or the pinhole images here are clear, but uh, the aspect CT images are cl more much clear and uh, help, uh, help us to localize very well the, the lesion. In any case, be sure that a diagnostic CT has not been performed Recently, think about the possibility to fuse the CT and the SPECT using software or to make a correlative image, a comparative image, and to perform the SPECT CT only if there is a lesion and you need to localize it, especially in, uh, in the body and uh, especially in uh, young children. Well, and what about the PET or the PET CT? For FDG, we need the attenuation correction and, uh, and we need also to uh, localize very well the anatomy of the, the lesions. For this reason, for the PET FDG, we need to perform uh, a CT as mentioned this morning and this CT can be uh, diagnostic or not diagnostic and uh, usually with a low dose, uh, even if it is a diagnostic CT. But if we perform a PET with, with a fluorine, uh, we are studying only the bones. 
and the bones are mostly superficial. That means that we don't need really the attenuation correction. And uh, if, if we don't perform the CT, then that means that we diminish by two-thirds the dosimetry of the exploration. Well, how to organize a little bit this lecture? Uh, I think that uh, we have, for the bone diseases in pediatrics, uh, we have to inform or to orient the pediatrician who asks for the diagnostic test to study a children with bone pain. We have to explain the advantages or, and disadvantages of each one uh, of the available technique, X-rays, ultrasounds, geographies, etc., and comment in each clinical situation or clinical symptom the indication, the utility, and the level of evidence of each test. Some years ago uh, appeared the, the last update of this document. The first document was from 1999 and uh, it has been published several updates and the last one is not really very, very recent. But it's a good document and uh, they advise, a uh, committee of like, experts advise us what uh, to apply, what test to apply in, in uh, each clinical situation and uh, which, uh, what level of uh, evidence. For example, it can be a level or recommendation A, B, or C. And uh, for example, for the uh, child abuse, the, the two tests to apply are the skeletal survey in radiology or the bone scan, okay. with different levels of uh, recommendation. And that means that uh, they explain that the bone scintigraphy is useful to detect uh, ocular fractures and has a high sensitivity in uh, uh, babies under one year of life. Usually all the diaphysis uh, has a, a hyperactivity and the blood pool image is useful to, for the differential diagnostic between old and new fractures because the new fractures are blood pool positive and the uh, old lesions are blood pool uh, negative. Here on the right you can see one example. Can you see the, the thicker, uh, acti the inc mild increased activity of this femur are compared with this one? And the femur seems to be uh, thicker than the other one. And here the same for the tibia. In fact, uh, they, uh, he has a fracture in all these diaphyses and in all the tibial diaphyses too. And it was a better child. Okay. This is another case. Look at the, a skeletal survey with uh, incredible uh, lesions on the skull. And these are the images of the bone scan with the blood pool image here. And here you can see an increase of activity on the right uh, uh, humerus, okay, here and here. And uh, on the uh, bone images, there is an increased activity on all this humor, and uh, also on the uh, iliac uh, bone, and also on a, um, on a rib. I think it's here. Okay. With blood pool positive. The positivity of the, of the blood pool uh, indicates that there are recent fractures. Well, then in Butter Child, uh, we have been performing during years bone scintigraphies to detect, uh, but the, the lesions detected on the bone with the bone scintigraphy have a low resolution uh, with a non-optimal specificity. The blood pool helps a lot uh, to detect inflammation and helps us to, to differentiate between old and new bone fractures. But uh, the problem is uh, some old fractures can continue to be positive on the bone scan, but negative on the blood pool image. The skeletal survey detects the bone fractures, but with a lower sensitivity than the bone scan and uh, with false negative uh, results in some very recent lesions and detects all fractures usually. The dosimetry is higher and uh, the, it is not a whole body image. And what happened with the PET with fluorine? The tech with fluorine detects the bone fractures with higher sensitivity than the bone scan and the uh, X-ray survey uh, and with a very good image resolution. The dosimetry of the fluor 
is very low, lower than the bone scan, if we inject a very low dose with a good uh, PET CT uh, scan. For example, I'm going to show you uh, uh, in, in some minutes images of a baby of uh, nine months in which uh, we have injected just a half uh, a millicury of uh, fluorine. That means that uh, this dose is lower than uh, uh, those from a, a bone scan yeah? and without CT. And uh, with uh, a small amount of uh, fluorine, we can obtain images of the whole body without CT. And uh, we, we perform only CT or X-ray in the areas with a uh, hypermetabolism uh, with uh, fluorine. That means that uh, uh, it is possible that this technique can be introduced at, uh, as a technique all-in-one for, the di of a, for a quick diagnostic of the um, uh, uh, ch uh, battered child. And compare the quality, this is the, the image uh, performed with a half a millicury of a fluorine. And here, this is a, an old uh, uh, scan uh, in an older boy, excuse me. Compare the quality of the images. This is performed with several millicuries. This is performed with just a half a millicury and uh, three minutes per bed on, on the scan. Look at this, uh, at this image, this MIP image. You can see easily the extent of the, of the fractures in this battery child with multiple fractures in all the body and in the skull. And uh, this has been obtained without CT and uh, without attenuation correction. Well, going to simulitis, I'm sorry because I'm going to repeat things, but uh, well, it's not. The X-ray is the first initial uh, investigation to be performed. The MRI is accurate and demonstrates infection, especially in the spine. The CT can demonstrate the existence of a sequestra. The ultrasound detects the superiorstal abscess and uh, has a high uh, false positive rate. And the bone scintigraphy with the two or three phase bone scan is more sensitive than X-ray in detecting focal osteomyelitis and is, is useful in a suspicion of osteomyelitis without uh, focal symptoms. And uh, the leukocytes, the white blood cells uh, scintigraphy, uh, confirm the infection in bone or joint, but uh, have uh, uh, false negative results in spine. This is one case of uh, septic arthritis of the knee. Uh, you, ha you have here the vascular images and the blood pool image showing an increased um, perfusion of the lateral part of the right knee and the uh, x-ray excuse me and the bone scan are completely normal without increasing activity on the lateral uh, condyle that means that uh, it's a, uh, a pattern of uh, arthritis without uh, bone involvement remember that uh, uh, we can have a diffuse increased uptake when we have a uh, hyperperfusion, but in this case it was uh, not the case and we, and we have not uh, abnormalities on the bone scan. This is one a special case, uh, the hip arthritis. Remember that in case of uh, hip arthritis or uh, in arthritis of the um, of the scapula, you have always to value the, the perfusion of the femoral or the umbral head. Why? Because in case of arthritis, it can be an increase in the pressure inside the articulation and the perfusion of the head can be uh, decreased or can be zero. And uh, this is uh, an emergency for the traumatologist because he has to intervene and uh, has to uh, diminish uh, the, the pressure inside the articulation. This can be also due to a, a septic embolism, but uh, the, the theory of the increased pressure inside the articulation is more accepted. In this case, uh, this um, this bone scan has not been reported adequately and it has been reported an osteomyelitis of the neck but uh, they said nothing about the absence of perfusion of the femoral head 
and uh, that means that uh, they has not been intervened. And nine months later, it wo we found here uh, irreversible sequela on the on the femoral head. This is another case. It's a seven-year-old boy with uh, a lytic permeative lesion on the right tibia with a medullar diaphyseal abscess on magnetic resonance imaging and uh, in the, the bone scan we, we find concordant uh, collisions uh, in uh, these areas. And uh, two years later the boy uh, came again for pain and fever. On the x-ray there is a sclerosis and uh, these are the images of the bone scintigraphy and the follow-up to two years after the acute osteomyelitis. What do you think? The blood pool is positive or is negative? I think here we have a, we can see really uh, an increased blood pool of all the tibia. Yes. And uh, what happened in the um, in the later bone phase? There is a deformity of this tibia with uh, diffuse increased uptake in all the diaphyses, yes? And how can we report this? Active osteomyelitis? It is possible, but we, we cannot be sure because uh, after a fracture or after osteomyelitis, the bone scan can persist positive during years. In this case, the positivity of the blood pool suggests a reactivation of the osteomyelitis, but it's pan and it's not clear. What does we have to do? Yes? Um, I would uh, just reflect sympathetic just why not? With fever. Okay, it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> we found that the, the, the whole shaft of the TBI is that many of people are taking like that. Mm -hmm. We can think about and the Yes, but the problem is the fever. <laughs> and then we have to discard a reactivation of the osteomyelitis, a chronic osteomyelitis. Well, we perform white blood cells scintigraphy. Yes, these are the, the bone scan. You can see in more detail all these lesions. And these are the images of the white blood cell scintigraphy. What do you think now? Is there a reactivation? Yes, where? In all the diaphyses? No, just in the submetaphyseal region. Okay? Okay, the, this uptake indicates a focal septic activity in this uh, chronic osteomyelitis. Yes? And what about the PET or PET CT for osteomyelitis? Uh, for in PET, we can perform two kinds of exploration. We can perform a PET with, with a fluorine, that means uh, an excellent quality bone scan, or we can perform a PET with FDG. And with FDG, we are going to detect the infection with a high sensitivity and a good image resolution. One is one with a CT, and the other one can be with or without a CT. Okay? This is one case that I show you this morning. It was a, a young lady of 30 years with infection of the right foot after a car crash. And I show you the, 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 the coincident uh, results of the FDG with lesions on the bone and the soft tissue and the fluor pet with lesions only on the, on the bones. Okay. Well, going to the Perthes disease. This is a four-year-old boy with suspicion of Perthes disease with abnormal left femoral head on the X-ray with uh, concordant with that uh, uh, MRI imaging. And these are the uh, bone scan images, in this case with uh, two phases, with an inflammation uh, in the blood pool image with a cold area on the pink hole images of, the, of both hips, right hip completely normal, left hip cold area with a lateral pillar. And remember, as explained this morning, the prognostic signs of the Perthes disease 
Uh, the extension is one of the pronostic size. The existence of an external column with a, a different degree of uptake is a, sing, is a sign of good prognostic. And also, in some severe cases of Pertus disease, there is a diffuse hypoactivity of the proximal metaphysis of the femur. And in these cases, the neck is not going to grow as much as uh, they can. Going now to the bone lesions with aggressive signs, in these cases the reference technique will be the bone scintigraphy, the PET CT and the MRI. Here we can show, you can see a case of an osteosarcoma studied with a, a X-ray bone scan, a SPECT CT of the bone scan uh, at, the, at the diagnosis look at these images of the diagnosis, it's really a very advanced case with a very bad prognostic. Look at all the lesions on the lungs and the extension of the regional uh, uh, tumor. This other case is the opposite. It's also an osteosarcoma in this case of the uh, proximal uh, submetaphysial area of the, of the right tibia. And in this case, we uh, perform a PET with FDG and uh, the diagnostic extension is completely negative and it is just a local tumor. Okay. This uh, tumor has been submitted to chemotherapy and after that, uh, it has been intervened with a salvage surgery, uh, pu putting on the leg uh, a big prosthesis with uh, a lot of um, things to immobilize the, the prosthesis, and uh, it just this uh, this pet was performed uh, after six months after the surgery, more or less, and uh, the pet was uh, uh, asked to be performed by the oncologist or sometimes by the traumatologist. Okay, in this case, it was by uh, by the oncologist and the activity around the prosthesis was com completely normal. The PET can detect local recidives around uh, the, the prosthesis. And uh, one year later, the, 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 the boy uh, come again to the hospital because he has pain on his leg uh, after a sport injury. And then we perform a bone scan. And what do you think about this bone scan? What happened? The clue are the specity images. Where do you can where do you see hyperactivity on the spec CT images? Okay. And this can be a recidive? Yes, it is attenuation corrected. What are these activities? If you see at uh, at this image you can see that uh, due to the uh, sport injury it has been a movement of the prosthesis and now uh, there is an increased activity around just the immobilization of the prosthesis, and that means that it's not a recidive, it's just a trauma <laughs> over the... the <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it's, it's just after a trauma. It was a, a f like a, a, a small fracture. Okay, and referring to the earring sarcoma, uh, Tim explained us uh, many, many things. I just want to show you some images. Earring sarcoma sometimes in the bone scan has a, a quite high uptake and it's easy to differentiate, but sometimes the, the uptake is very mild. This was a, a, a girl with a, a costal ewing sarcoma resected previously and she, she come again to the hospital with uh, this mild uptakes. In fact, there were metastases, but uh, it sometimes it's very difficult to, to, to identify. And uh, sometimes the PET with FDG, it's much more uh, useful for the follow-up of the Ewing sarcoma, much more than the bone scan. But in fact, on the oncologic guides, the bone scan continue to be uh, as the, the recommended technique. Or, for example, in this case of an Ewing sarcoma of the right tibia, look at the very mild uh, increased uptake uh, here. It's very difficult to suggest to the pediatricians that this is a, an Ewing sarcoma, and uh, it's much more easy to uh, study with uh, PET-FDG. 
look at the image with a pet FDG and compare with uptake, this uptake with this one. I think that in the future, I don't know if you agree, but I think that in the future the sarcomas will be followed with a FDG and not that uh, with um, a bone scan. And uh, some uh, words about the bone metastasis. In this case, it was, uh, uh, I think it was seven or eight years old girl with uh, knee pain and fever. And the radiologist uh, find an aggressive lesion on the left femodistal metaphysis with a retroperitoneal tumor on the, the ultrasound. We perform a bone scan with a, a high uptake in the abdominal tumor. Of course, it is a neuroblastoma and uh, with a submetaphysial activity nearly in all the, the long bones. That means it's a stage four neuroblastoma with uh, uptake in the tumor, with metastasis in all the vertebras and on the, on the long bones. And if you compare these images with the images of MIBG, the MIBG uh, show uptake on the tumor, but very mild uptake, much uh, very uh, less uptake uh, on the extremities that the, the bone scan. And perhaps for this reason, the bone scan continue to be recommended uh, in the initial staging of the neuroblastomas. Not in the follow-up, but yes, in the initial staging, because of the long bones, sometimes the manifestation of the bone metastasis are more clear on the bone scan than uh, on MIBG image. And uh, if we compare, if you ask me this morning, the MIBG uh, and the FDG on a neuroblastoma, uh, there have um, uh, differences between lesions with uh, MIBG uh, negative, FDG positive, and uh, the contrary has been described in several papers. And in fact, it, it seems that uh, the, the recommendation is to perform FDG PET in cases of clinical, clinical or radiological discordances, or in case in which the MIBG uh, is uh, converts in negative when has been previously uh, positive or with a neuroblastoma initially negative. In uh, these uh, three cases, it is advisable to perform a PET with FDG. Here we have uh, one case of uh, a recidive of the neuroblastoma <coughs> stage four. It's, it is a recidive with uh, multiple metastases on the spine. Uh, with MIBG uptake and uh, without FDG uptake. And in this other case, this is the contrary. Here you have uh, more lesions on the uh, PET scan than on the MIBG scan. That means that both explorations probably are complementary and probably uh, here we are obtaining images of the different cellular lines of the tumor you know that all the uh, neuroendocrine tumors are multicellular and uh, we have the tools to study different cellular lines. And of course, there are lines with uh, FDG uptake more undifferentiated and there are lines with MIBG uptake and there are differentiated tumors. One case of uh, Langerhans cells isocytosis. Uh, the PET with FDG is an exploration all-in-one again. Uh, you, you, if you perform an FDG, we can detect very easily uh, all the, the extension of the lesions uh, as this uh, boy with multiple involved vertebra, femur, uh, etc. Here, um, here on, the, on the thorax also. Here a vertebra, and here a big lesion on the omoplate. Okay. Back pain or neck pain, it's not frequent uh, uh, in children, and it's always organic. This is a case of a 13-year-old boy with a spinal pain at uh, the thoracic level, more during the night, with normal X-ray. And here, uh, what do you see? We, f we see a very focal lesion, a very small one, with a very high uptake. And uh, if we compare with CT, we perform the SPECT 
but not the spec CT. And comparing with a diagnostic CT performed just uh, two days before, then we can see that this is a needus, and uh, here we can see the lesion. We perform a radio guided surgery with a, a needus resection, no laminectomy, and uh, an excellent evolution of uh, this boy. What about the focal bone pain? This is a 13-year-old boy with a leg knee pain after exercise. And these are the images. What do you see? You can see very well on the uh, magnetic resonance that there is a lesion here with a mild uptake on the bone scan and the diagnosis was of non-nasifying fibroma. But in this other case, we can see on it's more or less the same history, but uh, it was a football player, and he has pain on the left leg, and here we have a periostic reaction. We perform a bone scan, and uh, there is a lesion with a, a mild increase in the blood pool, here, and here a very focal lesion, nearly linear. This has been reported as a possible stress fracture, but the family uh, has been very anxious and uh, they ask to perform a magnetic resonance. And the magnetic resonance has been difficult to interpret as well as the CT, and they describe uh, aggressive signs. They perform a biopsy and the pathologist was uh, had very a lot of problems. And the, 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 key, the key point was uh, two weeks later and uh, the X-ray follow-up showed that it was really a stress uh, fracture. Okay, the future, as mentioned before, are the correlative imaging with the image fusion, with the molecular imaging, and the straight collaboration between the imaging specialist and uh, we need the good clinical question uh, to know what do we have to answer. And uh, this is all for this lecture. Thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Isabel, for your elegant lecture. Um, do you want to uh, proceed to clinical cases since we are um, uh, ahead of our time? Or Up do you want to take a tea break? Up to you. Let's proceed to the clinical cases. You are the moderator. Okay, please. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Which is a treasure? Yes? A volunteer? MDP? No. <laughs> Fluorine, yes. <laughs> Nerve blood, blood pool. And uh, what abnormalities do you see? Is something abnormal? This is the PET image obtained just after the fluorine injection. Okay? I think it's here, it, it was three or four beds and one minute per bed without CT. That means that we have obtained all these images during the five minutes after the fluorine injection. It's like a blood pool image of a bone scan. What is abnormal? Is something abnormal or not? Yeah? yeah? What? What about the chest? Yeah? He has the stomach on the right? Okay. It seems that uh, we have two big areas of uh, abnormal uptake on both sides of the thorax. Yes? What do you need now? The late images? Something abnormal? Well, the tracer is fluorine. And this is 45 minutes after the injection. There is a, a little movement of the left leg, yes? Because we have a 
two femur, two left femurs. <laughs> hmm? What what does we have? What does we have to to have now? Well, the first thing that we have to say is that after these images obtained without CT, we decide to perform a PET CT later on, because of course there are a lot of uh, abnormalities. Okay, and that means that these MIP images have been obtained with PET CT. Do you want to see the the fused images? Well, these are the the MIP images of the the blood pool on the left and the fluorine on the right. And these are the fused images. Low count images, eh? but it's not a problem. They are diagnostic. Hmm? Oh. Do you want more images? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was a battered child. Uh, there are a fracture with a pleural involvement, inflammatory pleural involvement. Okay. Hmm? Yes. No, it not a, it's not a, fe a chest infection. It's a trauma, a bilateral trauma. More seen on the soft tissue involvement than on the bone involvement. Okay. And on the leg, you can see that there is nothing. Okay, this is another case. It's a one-year-old boy with a suspicion of acute mastoiditis. And this is the skeletal survey. Some comments? There is a radiologist here? No? Well, what to perform now? <laughs> bone scan and uh, MRI. What about the bone scan? Is there any abnormality? Hmm? Yes, but uh, on the planar images, can you see left scapula? Yes, very well. <laughs> It seems to be insufflated, isn't it? This was not detected by MRI. <laughs> they missed the scapula. Okay, and then fused images. Okay, we perform uh, under the suspicion what was really the, the end diagnostic. We, we perform a PET with FDG. How many lesions can you see here? This is the lesion in the scapula, okay? And this, what is this? This is a lytic lesion on the skull. That means? Hmm? Yes. Langerhans cells is isocytosis, okay? Okay, look at the discordance. Uh, here, it's much well seen here. The PET-FDG is the expression all-in-one for the histiocytosis. And the problem that we have uh, is the skull. Because uh, in the skull, due to the high cortical activity, it's easy to miss one lesion like this one. Sometimes you can see it, uh, but not always. Okay, and now one case in one adult, to change a little bit. Which are the tracers? What? One is FDG and the other one is fluorine, yes? On the left, FDG, and on the right, fluorine. And uh, both are normal or abnormal? Abnormal. Which is more abnormal? the fluorine, yes? And what can we see on the fluorine pet? Many... Yes, skull lesions, vertebral lesions, costal lesions, 
in pelvis also, yes? And with FDG, can you see any of these lesions? Few, less lesions than with uh, fluorine, yes? And uh, you are working with adults. Well, what uh, do you suggest as, uh, uh, as diagnostic? The bone scan was normal. Normal. In which oncologic disease we can have a normal bone scan with uh, a lot of uh, bone metastasis? Myeloma. Okay. Another case. It's, uh, I don't remember the age, but it's around four or five years old, with fever, severely ill, with uh, cardiac surgery performed two or three weeks before, and uh, the, uh, they sent uh, as the, the child for the, um, with, uh, to discard an external infection. And this is the image of the coronal pet. Do you want more images? Oh, no. I have no more. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, because I have more beautiful images. But what happened in the mediastinum? We can see some activity, like multinodular. No, I'm sorry, I have no more images. The mediastinitis. Okay. It was a big increase of activity at uh, the sternum level, but uh, with uh, a big mediastinal mass and uh, activity around uh, a lot of uh, mediastinal collections. Okay. No. There are multiple mediastinal masses. No lymphoids, no. Uh, abscess. Okay. abscess. Okay, and in this case, now we are experts about uh, this pathology. It's a 17 year old girl with a prolonged cortical treatment and bilateral uh, hip pain and submitted to some kind of surgery. Which, which kind of uh, intervention? You, you have here the bone, the diffused images. There is a fibula graft, a stem cell, yes, on the, on the, left, on the left side, yes. Well, I think it is, in this was on, the, on, on both. No, it's on, just on the right, you are true. Yes, yes. Okay, and in this case, this is a 22 months old uh, baby with um, is a battered child. How many fractures can you see here? What about the skull? Hmm? Yes. All the coronal uh, seizure uh, seems to be abnormal. And with that, we have to be very careful because very often it can be a lesion of the suture, but uh, without uh, alterations on the uh, CT. Okay. And what about the maxillar and the mandibula? It's a normal uptake? No. And what about some vert cervical vertebra? Also. And then we can go here. Here you can see the a lesion here on the coronal, and here you can see also on the on the tibia a fracture, an anterior fracture here. Yeah. It was a, a battered child with uh, many many lesions. In this case, we perform a, a CT with a low dose. You can see about the quality of the CT. And this case, 17 year old boy with a, a, a previous Epstein Barr virus. I think that uh, I have showed you this morning this, uh, this image, but now we can see in more detail some of the images. What do you think it is, is this? It's an increased uptake on the distal part of the fibula. 
Is this normal? Why do you have this uptake? Yes, it's the distal part of the fibula, and uh, they have to fix this uh, distal part of the fibula to the tibia, and for this reason, this here there is an increased uptake. And uh, what do you can see more here? This is normal. This is the, at the level of the hips. And you can see very well the rubber mobilization of uh, this side. And here, what's that? She had an osteonecrosis of both femoral heads. And osteonecrosis after corticoid treatment never go only one. <laughs> we have always more. Is an osteonecrosis of the talus. Okay, it's well seen, not? Okay, another case. What do you see? What's that? Look, it's like a tunnel here and here. It was, no, it was an osteonecrosis treated with forage and a stem cell. Which is the best hip? This one, okay? And here you have the coronal images and here you have the uh, transversal images and you can see very well the different degree of uh, uh, reconstru bone reconstruction in, uh, in both hips. Okay? You have the, the, the CT, here the magnetic resonance. The magnetic resonance doesn't detect very well all this uh, bone reconstruction. Okay? Another adult. What do you see? What's this? A, lesion, a cortical lesion? And here? <coughs> What's that? Yes. That means several bone involvement? Metastasis? And the sternum also? And uh, cold lesions on the, on, on the bones? What do you suggest as, as diagnostic? Myeloma, again. Okay. If we have problems with the myeloma with the bone scan, then it is recommended to perform a fluorine PET. And the last case. Half a curie of fluorine. Images obtained during the first three, four minutes of the whole body without CT and images obtained 45 minutes after the injection. Here we have obtained these images with one minute per bed and here three minutes per bed. How many fractures do you see? Mm -hmm. The scalp, the coronal suture, as before, the right humerus, and the other one is very mild. Look at the right radium, here. You can see now, a little bit. You can go to the, well, these are the complete blood pool images. And these are the complete uh, reconstruction of the late phase. 
look here and here okay the radiologist with the x-ray survey detect only the humeral the right humerus fracture nothing about the skull and uh, nothing about the right uh, radius here you have the the coronal images of uh, all the body and here you have uh, a triangulation of the distal right humerus and the triangulation of the area around the left orbiter in which you can see very well the symmetry in the uptake of uh, this area from one side compared to the other and here there is a triangulation of uh, the lesion in the middle of the right uh, radius look okay the blood pool of this lesion was normal that means this is new or old it's an old one and the other two the blood pool was positive look at this positivity and look at this positivity huh? and here there is no a blood an increased blood pool that means we have uh, three fractures the tracer was fluorine and the diagnosis was butter child with uh, several fractures in different times okay. and this is all Thank you very much.